From the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., The Congressional Report, with your host, Iowa Congressman Tom Latham. This country is based on farms, on small businesses, and creating jobs and opportunities. That is the lifeblood of this nation. And now your host, Congressman Tom Latham. Welcome to the Congressional Report. Thank you for joining me today. In early February of this year, I joined five of my colleagues in the U.S. House of Representatives to visit Iraq and Afghanistan. It was an honor and a privilege to meet face to face with some of our men and women in uniform, and I saw firsthand the remarkable job American troops have done in both countries. The trip also gave my colleagues and me valuable insight into the critical challenges that do remain. In both countries, our delegation met with U.S. troops, commanders on the ground, and both American and foreign diplomatic representatives to take part in frank and honest conversations and gather their assessments of where we stand in each country. Joining me on this edition of the Congressional Report is one of the members of Congress that participated in the February trip, New York Congressman John McHugh. First, on a broad basis, John, what, what was your impression, certainly in Iraq itself, with your 10 visits, what, what's the progression you've seen? Well, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, and it's good to be with you where we're not sitting on an airplane after <laughs> a pretty intensive trip. But uh, clearly, uh, Iraq is, is a war that, that is phasing down, and that's certainly a good thing. Um, and it's really been kind of a, a climb up the hill, and now, fortunately, I think we're well on our way down it. My, my first trip, uh, we were able to go out into the city of Baghdad. We walked the streets. We went into a school. And as I'm sure most of your viewers remember, it, it went badly pretty quickly. Um, and after that time, it was really a very dicey situation. Fortunately, in large measure because of what everybody knows uh, uh, commonly as a surge, uh, the situation has been stabilized. And it's not just a military uh, success. And in fact, I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding about the surge. They think just, well, we just put more troops mm -hmm. in. But as you and I know, and talking as we have in the past to General Petraeus and others, uh, there was another component, the, uh, the civil part of it, uh, the establishment of uh, what is still a very young and, and a very struggling democracy, but one in which, as we saw, Tom, you and I, right after the provincial elections, has really taken root, and, and that has been so important. And we were able to go back uh, outside the green zone into right. what has been called the red zone, and uh, wasn't quite red. And I remember the thing that struck me as we were on the way to, to visit uh, uh, the, uh, Vice President Talibani uh, in the public square just outside that palace, there were campaign posters all over the place. Uh, these folks not just picked up on democracy, but almost American-style democracy. And it could have been uh, late October in an election year in, in Iowa or upstate New York. Um, and, and I think that's a big tribute to it. The, the challenge I think we have from this point forward is not to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Things are going in the right direction. Uh, as, as you and I heard in virtually every meeting with General Ordiorno, with... Uh, uh, Ambassador Crocker with the other military leadership, while they're very, very pleased with where we are, uh, it's still, as they said, the word they use, very fragile. So things are going in the right direction. Uh, this is a war that hopefully is winding down, a uh, great victory for the forces of democracy, but one that has to be brought across the finish line, and we still have a ways to go. Uh, you could see now the working relationship with the military and our, uh, well, our ambassador, but also the economic follow-up. And when you talk about the surge, I mean, people uh, should understand that our military went out, uh, cleared people in cooperation with the Iraqi security forces, with the Iraqi military. They held it. And finally... Uh, was followed up with economic support for the community so the leaders in their communities could finally say that their future was with democracy, with the government, rather than the, the, the terrorists in there. Uh, would, 
Tell us a little bit about Ambassador Crocker. He's no longer uh, in his position there. Uh, he's retired, I guess. Uh, but uh, what, what kind of difference do you think he made over there? Well, his presence was, was critical. Uh, he worked day and night to, to bring that nexus that you just referred to from the military into the civilian leadership and then into the communities. You know, the, the military uses a phrase, hearts and minds. And what that means is it, you can kill terrorists. You can prevail militarily. But it takes more than that to stabilize the theater of war. And, and that means helping people understand they have a future in what is happening on the ground, that you can make their lives better. We didn't want to create another Saddam Hussein who right. uh, you know, uh, just uh, ruled over his, his people in, in, in cruel and brutal ways. But we wanted them to understand that Iraq could be unified, uh, that life would be better for them. Uh, and that civilian component, that uh, providing jobs, economic opportunity, the opportunity that I think most every mom and dad wants for their children to grow up in peace and get a decent education and a little bit better future than they had is going to be there as well. And if, if that didn't occur, and if it didn't still occur, and there's still a long ways to go, whether you're talking about the kind of the infrastructure involved and electricity and water, et cetera, and, and particularly jobs. You know, when they <clears throat> said that the, the, the peace or the moving towards peace in Iraq uh, was very fragile, what obstacles do you think are the biggest potential uh, problems out there? Well, the kind of things we just talked about. You, you mentioned the uh, Anbar awakening right. where, where the Sunnis rose up and said, we're not going to cooperate with these terrorists mm -hmm. anymore because they're killing innocent people. Uh, they're bringing a way of life and a perspective we don't agree with, and we can see a better future um, siding uh, ultimately with the coalition and, of course, the Americans. Uh, we have to fulfill that promise. We have to help them understand that they didn't do this um, on, a, on a wrong basis, mm -hmm. that indeed uh, their children will have the opportunity for a job, that they'll have the opportunity for a job, that their communities can grow and prosper, uh, and they can lead the kind of lives that they could only dream about under Saddam Hussein, right. and not just for the Sunnis, but across the broader spectrum with the Shias and the Kurds uh, and all people of Iraq. Um, that still has a way to go. Now, obviously, a critical component of that is to continue in the civilian effort. Uh, the people in the State Department and the various other agencies of the United States to, to help build up that economy, which we kind of focus on oil, but there's much more. Ba Baghdad, in fact, Iraq, used to be the breadbasket of the Middle East. But it's the Fertile Crescent. That's right. I mean, it's but as, as we've heard, because of the conditions that have existed, that's gone away, and now they're a net importer of food. We need to turn that around. The Ag Agriculture Department, and, and you're, a, you're a great expert on that, coming from good farm country right. as you do, uh, has to be a critical part of that. Until that is completed to a satisfactory level, the military aspect could quickly devolve. Uh, Al-Qaeda hasn't gone away. Uh, they're in a, a defeat mode. But as, again, we heard time and time again, they're still waiting and watching, and they're ready to fill any vacuum that may, we might help create. And we've just got to close the deal, uh, as we would say here right. in the United States. You know, it, it was amazing to me to, to see the kind of progress, and you always have to go back to the men and women in uniform that uh, have fought so bravely and uh, done such an unbelievable job. And we've... Uh, you've got a very uh, Ford Drum in your district, that the most deployed unit, I think, in the uh, in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, with the tempo that we've had in our Guard and Reserve units uh, from Iowa and throughout the country, uh, tremendous sacrifice by so many people. But to see that kind of progress, and to see in my four visits, I know in your ten visits, that uh, the change that's taken place, it's just absolutely incredible. From the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., this has been the Congressional Report with Iowa Congressman Tom Latham. Have a question, comment, or concern? Congressman Latham wants to hear from you.